Hey everybody, this is Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and KillerPHP.com. In this quick video, I'm going to go over what I call the professional web design process, a roadmap. This is actually a series of uh, steps and questions that, uh, uh, that are involved in the web design process. These are questions that you should ask when you're starting any new project. I've been asked many times by people to uh, try to tie it all in together for them because they're not sure how to, how, to, how to proceed. So this is what I've been doing for a long time and this is how I approach every project and it really simplifies the process, speeds things up and uh, so it's, it's pretty useful to learn. I'm assuming for this video that you've done my complete web designer or my complete web programmer packages uh, or at least you know you know your way around HTML and CSS and design and maybe a little bit of JavaScript a little bit of PHP these sorts of things so what I'm gonna do this is a an actual PDF uh, guide if you will that uh, comes included with the complete web designer and the complete web programmer packages so this video here is really a supplemental to uh, this list. So I'm going to read off the list. I'm, I'm looking at it now if you haven't figured it out. But I'm going to add color. I'm going to supplement the point forms and the quick little examples that I have in the, uh, in the PDF. So let's uh, start with the beginning. So the five steps, questions in the web design process when starting a new project. Uh, number one, you have to ask yourself this question. If the site will be updated very often, or more than one person will be editing the site's content, then what you should be considering is building off of a CMS, like Drupal, Joomla, CMS is short for Content Management System, or maybe a blog software like WordPress. And these days, blog software and uh, CMSs, they're, they're very similar. There's a lot of crossover in terms of functionality. So. If you were having, say, a smaller site, you know, with one or two authors contributing, uh, you know, maybe, you know, whatever, a few hundred pages, couple subsections, that kind of stuff, then WordPress is probably uh, the choice for you. If you find that you may have many authors and they may have all kinds of different levels of access, many subsections, where you have a much more complex site where the content is changing a lot, then you probably want to go towards something like Joomla or Drupal or any other CMS, uh, a, con a full-blown content management system, simply because they're, they, they have the infrastructure in place to be able to handle that much more complexity in the site. Once you've decided to either go with a CMS or not, this is step two, it's time to work on the views at this time. Better say, you know, when I say views, what I'm talking about is the pages that people actually will see. So if you're working with a client, what you would do is sit down with them. And you might draw a little diagram, say, okay, what do you need? You need a products pages, a contact us page, a, what do you want to have on the home page? You sort of map this out, you know, if they're going to have an e-commerce store, what are they going to need? So you map out the views. And the reason you do this, and you draw it on paper or something, and the reason you do this is so that uh, you and the client can have a clear idea of what you're looking at in terms of the scope of the original site. Uh, so this, this, this is an important step, and uh, it helps clarify the project. Number three, once you've defined your pages and so on, and this will change, of course, as the project evolves, because I can assure you that clients will will have different ideas, so you got to be ready to, to be flexible. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to define the global style and the structure of the site. So first of all, page layout style, you know, whether the page is going to be left aligned or center aligned, these type of things. You know, what are going to be included in the main menus, uh, you know, like on killer sites, we have our top main menu that's consistent throughout the site. What's going to be in that main menu? What's important to the client? Uh, you want to also look at specific design elements like the font styles for both body text and header text. This way you, just, you define this in your CSS pages so this you can roll out and make sure it's consistent across the site. Those type of considerations are uh, 
very important, especially with static sites, because if you're using a Drupal or WordPress, it's it's really it's, it's easy. It's really easy to update that, not scratch that. It's pretty easy if you design your sites properly with CSS. This is all pretty easy to change very quickly. But it's good to set things up so you set up your master style sheet from the beginning, so you sort of define all this, so you don't have to go back and you know as often to change everything. Um, Further to that, site colors, you know, you want to choose well-matched colors. If you're colorblind, you may want to go to Adobe to have this cooler tool that's kind of cool. So you can, you know, let's say you take your client's logo and you can put it, those colors into uh, the cooler program. It's a web program, by the way. Adobe provides for free. And then you can... Uh, you know, Cooler will tell you which colors would work with the logo, so then you can use that as the basis of the color scheme for the site. Okay, so step four. Uh, if you're not using a CMS, plan on the use of PHP includes to create common page elements like footers, headers, and menus. So, in stage four, in step four rather, uh, there's an assumption you're not going to use a CMS, because if you use a CMS, uh, then all of this is defined for you if you've ever used WordPress or Drupal. All the site main menus are, are there, and this is all defined in the theme that you use for a particular CMS. Again, I'm assuming that you've done my videos on these subjects, so I'm not going to elaborate about the themes and CMSs and so on. Anyway, with step four, you want to set up your structure for your pages. I always say you should you know you shouldn't use basic HTML pages anymore. There's no point to that. You just you're just handcuffing yourself in terms of functionality if you just use plain HTML. What you should be doing is going in there and uh, using at least PHP pages so you can take advantage of PHP mechanisms, mechanisms like the include mechanism. So again, step four, you use includes to create common page elements like your footers, your headers, uh, your menus, and so on. Stage five or step five, and I'm going to read this right off. When you have steps one, one to four covered, it's time to start building. So you notice, you know, before we actually, you know, wrote much code, you know, you may have did some your know, basic CSS and your basic, you know, pages. Um, you know, at stage five is when you actually get into it and you actually start uh, uh, building out the site for real. And one point uh, I make is consider the use of uh, templates for, for at least the structure of the page. And if you can find it, a template could also be used as a basis of the site in terms of design. Remember, don't reinvent the wheel. So I'm not saying that you should use templates uh, for your design uh, all the time. That's no. But you can. You can. It's, it's a viable option. You find a nice template. You base the site on that. You reconfigure it. You tweak it. This is done all the time. It works good. It doesn't necessarily have to look like a template site because you you'll change it and you 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 modify it, you know, so it looks different. That said, you should. I wouldn't be typically. I wouldn't be trying to build CSS-based layouts, the structure of the layouts, uh, from scratch. You know, there's so many structural templates out there. For instance, Dreamweaver, CS4, CS5, and so on. They all come with all these free uh, CSS templates. So you can grab it. I want center aligned. And you know that those templates, those CSS templates, will be uh, bug free and well tested. So you don't have to worry about screwing around with how the layout works in IE6 versus IE7. This will be uh, done for you, you know. So what do you need to know uh, to do all this kind of stuff? That was it. That was the five steps, by the way, right? Uh, number one, you, you know, choose whether or not you're going to use a CMS or not. Number two, uh, you want to start figuring out what pages, what views. We can, nerds call pages the views because you, you view them, right? Uh, a products page, contact page. You, know, you sit down with the client. You start to figure this out. And then number three, you define your global styles, and your page layout, your menus, your fonts, your colors. Number four, uh, then you, if you're not using a CMS or a blog, then you use, uh, uh, you set up your, your common elements for your pages, your footers, your headers, your menus, and so on. I suggest using PHP, although you can use any dynamic page technology. If you want to use ASP or ASP.NET, that's up to you. I'm a big 
big uh, proponent of PHP, and uh, if you want to know why, just go to killerphp.com. You'll learn all about that. So you set that up in four, and uh, step five is you actually start building everything with this information. You pull all this together. You may leverage a, a visual template, at least leverage a uh, structural template so you don't have to screw around with layout issues, uh, cross-browser stuff that you could run into. Uh, so what should you know? You need to know a little HTML and CSS. You should know some PHP, some JavaScript. Um, I always say uh, that web designers should also learn at least a blog or a blog-like product like a WordPress and get to know it well because I can guarantee you that you're going to run into clients who are going to want functionality that these blogs or these CMSs will provide for free. So why, why create hassles for yourself? Learn one and, and, and get really good at it so you can just go implement it really easily. Um, another thing you're going to need to know for modern web design is you need to understand an Ajax library. You know, there's a few out there, jQuery, Scriptaculous, and so on. I've decided to hitch my uh, boat to, uh, to jQuery because uh, it's used quite a bit. And I think Microsoft is with it and a few other big companies. It's a very robust library, so you want to add all kinds of uh, fancy JavaScript-based widgets to the page. Uh, jQuery is a way to go. Um, another thing you might want to learn uh, is to pick a form software uh, to install and get to know how to configure it. A lot of sites may require forms. It is not as much of a priority as the other things, but it, it's still something to have in the back of your head. Uh, another thing to learn about is a credit. I had to uh, uh, reshoot this last segment again. My apologies because the, uh, I don't know what, uh, the camera just stopped working for some reason. Anyway. The last thing you should learn about is uh, you should learn a credit card processor, something like PayPal or, or whatnot, just so that you understand uh, the process of setting up credit card and an e-commerce type of uh, transactional situation. Um, I think more and more going along with my, my theme that I've been pushing that we're going to see a lot more small business out there uh, that are going to be using websites. I think. Uh, Knowing how to set up an e-commerce situation makes sense, so you should, in that case, you're going to need to use some third-party processor. We, uh, we use uh, one of our own for our own credit card processing. We also use PayPal. PayPal is quite easy to set up. There's many different levels. You can set it up just using basic HTML. Uh, you can set it up using a combination of uh, PHP and HTML, so you can you know send things back and forth, and you actually... Uh, PayPal actually rather also provides a full API so you can do everything seamlessly within your site. So they, they offer a good range. I'm not trying to push PayPal. You can use any processors you like. There's, there's many good ones out there. Um, it's just the point is, is take the point is, is this just to learn at least one so you understand how it works. And they all pretty much work the same way. There's nuances and differences, and some are easier in certain contexts than others. But once you know one, to, to work with other processors, other payment gateways, uh, is pretty simple uh, well, compared to not knowing any. Anyhow, that's it. If you want to learn more about the skills that you need to know, uh, become a professional web designer, web programmer. Uh, you can check out the KillerSites.com magazine. It's KillerSites.com slash magazine. And just do a search for uh, skills of professional web design. And I go into detail there and big list and uh, some comments along the way. I'm Steph Mischuk. I hope you like this video. My apologies for the interruption. I don't know why the camera stopped, but uh, yeah, technology. All right. Have a good day. We'll talk soon.